In this video, we're taking a photographer's and videographer's first look at the new M1 Pro MacBook. I'll be doing some tests in Lightroom and Final Cut Pro, and I'll give you my initial thoughts to help you see whether you should upgrade. I'm also using the mid-range 16-inch, which is why I think most creators will be getting. All the big YouTube reviews are the fully specced out M1 Max that costs five grand. This laptop costs half of that. Should you buy it? Let's get into it. For those of you new here, my name's Chris. I teach photography and creative business. All right, so I just got back from the Apple store with this new MacBook. Everyone was posting about ordering these online with long wait times, and I just went in and got one. This morning, me and my girlfriend Kayla went to the Apple store in Chicago right before it opened. There were a handful of people waiting outside, and it was my first time actually waiting in line for a new Apple product on release day. As a kid, I used to dream about this, so I'm grateful I'm able to do these things now. I'm upgrading from a 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro with an i7, 32 gigs of RAM, four gigs of graphics and a one terabyte solid state drive. I decided to go with the M1 Pro with a 10 core CPU and a 16 core GPU. I've got 16 gigs of RAM in it and a one terabyte solid state drive. This isn't the dream maxed out configuration. Instead, I opted to go with a mid-range model for a few reasons. One, it's a lot cheaper than the M1 Max. Two, it takes weeks to a month to get a customized configuration, and I want to get these videos out there for you guys. And three, I want to see if this laptop is plenty for me or if I'm still craving more out of a computer. I can always return this and get an upgrade if I need to. Right out of the box, this thing feels different than the previous 16-inch MacBook Pro. I don't hear anyone talking about this, but you can feel that there's more room for airflow in the laptop. My old one just feels super dense and this feels like there's room for airflow. It kind of feels like knocking on a wall with a stud versus just your eyewall. The keyboard on this one feels pretty much the same as my old one, but it does feel slightly more responsive. I'm really liking the fully black keyboard design on this too. It's nice to have normal keys again instead of the touch bar as well. The fingerprint reader feels faster, but I could just be making that up. And the ports. I'm so glad we've got the SD card reader back. That's going to make it so much easier to just plug in my SD card, take all my photos and videos off of it, and then edit them right away. I'm also pumped for MagSafe. My first MacBook was a 2016 one with all USB-C, so I never got to experience MagSafe. I've always liked the idea behind it, so I'm glad it's back. The charging brick is also a little bit bigger on these laptops. I wanted to run three tests today. This is of a common workflow I have and what other photographers probably have too. As you may know, I'm a product photographer running a production company. A common deliverable I have is stop motions. These are around 100 photos processed in Lightroom, exported, and then stitched together in Final Cut Pro. What better way to test this new laptop than by putting it through these tests? Importing 100 photos, generating one-to-one -one previews for them, and exporting them is a very common workflow in my business. Now, if you're a photographer, I bet you go through a similar workflow as well. So let's get into it. I'll be comparing the times between my old laptop, an i7 with 32 gigabytes of RAM, four gigs of graphics, and this new brand new M1 Pro with a 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Both are running macOS Monterey and the same versions of Lightroom and Final Cut Pro. The photo files I'm using here are gonna be massive. I opted for my Sony a7R 4 for this shoot to really put these laptops through the test. My camera shoots 61 megapixel images and that translates to 122 megabyte raw files. Times 100, we're gonna be importing over 12 gigs of data into Lightroom. Now, I don't know how much this test will be affected by the memory cards I'm using, but I'm using Sony's top of the line SD cards with a read speed of 277 megabytes a second. So now that we know the technical details, let's get into the actual test. I love that we have an SD card reader in this laptop now. Honestly, it just makes things so much better for being able to plug in directly. Thank you for listening, Apple. All right, let's hit import on the same exact time on these and see what happens. The new M1 Pro MacBook imported all the photos in 49 seconds and completed all the previews in a minute 56. My 2019 mid-range MacBook completed the import in 226 and all the previews in 259. Now the import times are drastically different here, which was really surprising. I wasn't expecting that much of a difference at all here. Lightroom actually builds previews in parallel as it imports, and the final time for the M1 Pro was 156, and the 2019 was 259. So we've got about a 50% increase in speed there. An even bigger difference was using Lightroom. Going through photos was super fast, there was zero lag between switching within the develop module. I'll go in depth in my final review about this, but I think this is where most of my time will be saved. I'll be testing more throughout the week, but right now I just wanted to get you guys some real benchmarks. Now that all the photos are imported and previews are built, I won't do a crop so that we can really stress test the export, but let's suck this generic preset to process the photos how I typically do. I copied and pasted the settings on both, and it was definitely slightly faster on the M1 Pro. Next, let's do the actual export test. 
First, I'll be exporting the photos in the full 61 megapixel resolution. After that, I'll export them in the standard Instagram settings of 1080 by 1350 pixels, and those are about one megabyte files each and I'll see what the differences in speed there are. If you're enjoying this so far and you want to see my full review, be sure to subscribe. I'll be testing more Final Cut Pro, more Lightroom, and just general use of the laptop. And if you're getting any value out of this video so far, please hit the like button, it really helps me out. So back to the exports. The 100 photos full res export took four minutes on the M1 Pro and about 6.30 on the older laptop. Again, we're seeing about a 50 to 60 difference in speed here. The scaled down photos here were way faster to export. 100 photos on the M1 Pro took 50 seconds, and on the old Intel chip, they took a minute 36. This is almost twice as fast, but I'm guessing this might have something to do with the write speed as well. I'm not really sure why this test was twice as fast, but the others were only 50% faster. After the exports, I compiled a stop motion of these in Final Cut Pro, but both of those were really fast. These clips are generally 1080p and only last 15 to 30 seconds. The new computer exported that stop motion in four seconds and the old one took seven seconds. Both are really fast here and not really noticeable in a daily workflow. Where it gets interesting though is with exporting 4K. I want to see how a 10 minute YouTube video does. This is a 10 minute 4K video of my iPad mini review that I uploaded a couple weeks ago. Check that out if you haven't yet. I'll be exporting the final 4K file on both of these laptops to test the speed. Now we can really see the M1 Pro chip shine. Final Cut Pro is optimized to take full advantage of this new chip. And the difference here is huge. The M1 Pro exported this 10 minute long 4K file in a minute 26. That's insanely fast for a 4K export. My old laptop was still chugging along for a while. It took four minutes and 36 seconds for that one. And that's three times slower. It's crazy how much faster the M1 Pro can be when the software is optimized to take advantage of this. I hope Lightroom takes note and does some crazy stuff with it. Finally, I want to mention the HDR display on this thing. It's really gonna change the game in content creation. I don't currently do anything in HDR, but Apple just lowered the barrier to entry significantly. No longer do you need a multi-thousand dollar display for this workflow. It's going to be amazing to see what so many creatives can do with this computer. The power behind the M1 Pro chip and this machine will really push the needle for what's capable for creators. When I was at the Apple store this morning, I overheard the Apple employee saying that this configuration I have is more than enough for a TV production. And now creators have access to all this power. If you're thinking about this MacBook, let me know down below. I appreciate you giving me your time, and if you liked it, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to stay notified for my full review, and I'll see you in the next one.